if you thank you jesus if you're hearing me just uh let me know are you hearing me clearly over there okay thank you thank you god bless you hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus i want to specially welcome everybody to uh, study again tonight it's always a wonderful thing to be in god's presence and to learn um from the feet of jesus the feet of the holy spirit the greatest teacher of all the greatest teacher hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus We've been taking a study on the series that we've been handling, um, 50 things or things that you should never take for granted, things we should never take for granted. And uh, last week, we stopped at uh, presentation. I think we dwelled on that presentation, and that was very, very powerful. Remember, I said that we should never take presentations for granted. Before we continue, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Let's begin with prayer. The Bible says prayer is the master's key. Jesus started with prayer. He ended with prayer. Prayer is the master's key. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's exalt his holy name. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life. We give you all the praise and all the glory. King of kings and Lord of lords, we appreciate you. We thank you for always bringing us together to learn at your feet. Holy Spirit, we are here again to learn at your feet. We pray that you teach us by yourself. Teach us tonight in such a way that we will understand in the name of Jesus. I, I pray for everyone here right now and those who are going to join us later on in this teaching tonight. I pray that you will make us of quick understanding. You will amplify your word in our spirit and that the Holy Spirit will bless us as we hear the word of God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for all that you've done since the beginning of this week is Friday again, and we are grateful to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our brethren. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our in-laws. Thank you for our brothers and our sisters. Thank you for all our church members. Thank you for everyone here today. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for friends of this ministry. We are so grateful. Thank you for my sons and my daughters in the Lord. Thank you for all of them all over the world. We are grateful to you. Heavenly Father, those who are hearing this word tonight and those who will later listen to this message, let everyone be blessed. Let everyone be transformed. Let your word change. Let your word heal. Let your word transform. Let your word renew us. Let your word rejuvenate us. Let your word vitalize our mortal bodies. Let your word bless our soul. Let your word produce great ideas. Let your word change us all together. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. We are grateful to you. Satan, you cannot be here. No, light and darkness cannot be in the same place. We bind you and we cast you out of this place now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, over to you absolutely. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this evening. So we're going to continue our study tonight on the things that we should not take for granted. Things we should not take for granted. I want to quickly, you know, the more we go deep into this teaching, the more 
God began to bring a lot of things to my mind. You know, we just finished talk, praying our, our three prayer series that we handled on the spirit of yet, how the butler, you know, forgot Joseph. And that again, just began to bring me back to things we should not take for granted. You know, so, so many people have taken the place of others in their life for granted. Remember the, the, play, the first thing we mentioned that we should never take people for granted. We should never take places for granted. Let me tell you something, you are not the best around. For people to decide to be with you does not mean that you should take them for granted. You see, you were not the best lady around that your husband married you. You were not the best guy in town, but your wife said yes to you. Never take commitment for granted. Never take access that somebody open himself to you so that you come close. Does not mean that you should take closeness for insult. You should take closeness for, you know, this C finish that people talk about, which is very, you know, for, we, should, we should not take access for granted. No. Don't take access for granted. The person you are close to, th there are many people that want to be close to that person, but they could not, they cannot, they are not able, and they are wanting you, you are very close, you have access to that person. So there is a lot that we are learning from this series as God begins to open us up to understand them. We must not take them for granted. Don't take presentation for granted. That was the last place the last thing we talk about, you know, the last point, presentation. Never, ever take presentation for granted. Remember I said last week that if you look at, you know, uh, presentation from you are presenting a, a delivery or you are, present, you are presenting uh, yourself, whichever way you look at it, never take that opportunity to present for granted. Don't take it for granted. The Lord will help us as we continue to, to understand all this. The Bible says, do you see someone who is skillful, who is diligent in his business? He will not stand before ordinary men. He will stand before kings. He will not stand before men, officials of low ranks, low rank officials. No, he will stand before nobles. He will stand before people of great stature, people of great influence. You see, don't take presentation for granted. Don't take presentation for granted. Moses, remember last, last, last week, we said when Moses, when Pharaoh asked that Moses to be brought, not, not, not Moses, Joseph, when Pharaoh asked that Joseph should be brought from the dungeon, he used the word in the amplified version. He said, and then Pharaoh sent and called for Joseph, Genesis 41, verse 14. Genesis chapter 41, and in verse 14. Then, I'm reading from the Amplified. Then Pharaoh sent and called for Joseph, and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon. So they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon, but they did not hurriedly present him to Pharaoh. They cleaned him up. He cleaned up himself. He shaved, put on a good cloth, and then he went before the Pharaoh. Jo and when Joseph shaved himself and changed his clothes, making himself presentable, I love this amplified version, he came to Pharaoh. So he made himself presentable, then he came before Pharaoh. We also talked about Esther. We said Esther was the first woman and the only woman in the Bible that declared a national fasting and prayer, and everybody obeyed it. Everybody obeyed it. And the Bible says, this Esther, before he became the queen, after King, uh, Queen Vashti fumbled, you know Queen Vashti fumbled, and then the, there was that order that made it to come. And Mordecai, his uncle said, go and show yourself. You don't know whether God will favor you. That was how she went. And all of them went through the same purification. But when it was time for presentation, the Bible said that there were spices that were used 
you know, six months. It took them six months to prepare them. And then another six months to use perfumes and costumes, cosmetics all over. So it's not today cosmetics start, start, started. Though. It's been there for a long time. And it's for good presentation. No wonder when beauty met with spirituality, Mm -hmm. When preparation met with spirituality, presentation was excellent. The king could not remove his eyes from Esther. Mm. You see, huh? Do you see that? Uh -huh. The king could not remove his eyes. There were many other people there that looked beautiful, but they were not spiritual. You know, but Esther added spirituality. Join added to his own beauty, and then the application of all these things. So he, so her presentation was just on parallel. Nobody, the king said, no, 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 no. This is the one. You see. So I pray for you that the Lord will make you so excellent, so that you will do things so excellently, and so that everything you do, there will be a touch of excellence in it. The, you see, this human eye, this our human eye, always like good things. You two, you agree with me. Uh -huh. This our human eye is like good things. And the truth is that we, um, except the person is a witch or a wizard or a sadist, that you will see something good and with yeah, don't like your hand. But if it's some, but if it's just not normal human being like all of us, we our eyes like good things. When your eyes see something good, ah, this is good. This is so good. Ah. This is so good. When you see an altar, wow, so beautiful. When you see somebody dress so well, oh my God, this is so nice. This is so beautiful. Yes, our eyes like good things. This is what will lead me to the next point. The next thing that we should not take for granted. It is called packaging. Packaging. We should not take packaging for granted. Don't take packaging for granted. So many people say, wow, if you are a child of, if you are a child of Christianity, why must we be doing packaging? Hey, never take packaging for granted. No, don't take packaging for granted. It is very, very, very important. Very, 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 very important. Don't take packaging for granted. Packaging is what you need is very, very important. Very, very, very important. Packaging, wow. Packaging is super, super. When so, you see, everything looks ordinary until it is packaged. Everything look, many things will look vulnerable until it is packaged. Packaging is powerful. Our current world is a world of make-believe. Packaging and fake projections. You know, people will do anything to get likes and followership just by packaging themselves as valuable, even when, now listen, even when they are really shallow and have nothing to offer but fully, they will package themselves. Mm, I'm telling you, packaging. So the progress some some of these fake people have they've made in their life is because of packaging. A lot of packaging. That's why. So if fake is progressing by packaging, why should originals not be well packaged? We have to be packaged. We are, it's very important. Excellence we attract global attention any day, any time. Jesus said every soul is important, including any, include that person in your church congregation, in our church congregation that may look not to, have, to belong. We must make sure that person, we do it in package our services in such a way, do our things in such a way that that person will feel belong. God doesn't want us to lose any. He wants us to bring more to his kingdom. You see, this is very, very important. Excellence attracts global attention, and anyone who seeks to excel must never take the proper packaging of self, the packaging of yourself, product, packaging of your product, 
pack services, packaging of your services for granted. Never take this for granted. You package yourself, you package your product, and you package your services that you are rendering. Package it. It is packaging. Many people don't have the kind of content you have. Many people don't have the kind of depth that we have. They don't have the kind of revelation we have. They don't have the kind of anointing that we have. All we need is packaging, the correct packaging, the right packaging, and there will be a change. There will be a difference. I'm telling you the truth. There will surely be a change. There will surely be a difference. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Packaging. So I said that a lot of great products, a lot of great services, a lot of great programs, and a lot of great projects have gone unnoticed. Why? Because of low patronage. Why did that happen? Because of poor packaging. So many years ago, I told somebody, I said, never again. None of my messages will ever be lost anymore. Because the message that you say you did not even prepare for, but God prepared for every service. It is that message that will become very powerful and God will do great things. So I said, no. And there are people, generations yet to come, and those who are here now that need that word, that need that ministration. You see some of the teaching you are teaching. So we say, ah, was, that on, was that on camera? Are we were we live? Yeah, we were, we are live. We are live. A lot of people are being blessed by that. Can you imagine you just come to the altar and you are you don't know that you are on, on YouTube? I mean, you are on YouTube, you are on Facebook, you are on um, uh, Instagram, you are on all the you are on iPod, you are on all those platforms. At the same time, people are watching you all over the world, and you are teaching ATS. And you can imagine if you don't dress well. Packaging has already, somebody will just open it. <laughs> what is this? It will just go to another, another site. They will begin to, they will just be shouting or doing something else. Why? Because the packaging just put them off. The packaging just put them off. This is important. It is good for us to take note of this. Packaging is very, very important. Packaging is very, very important. And I pray, as you are hearing the, 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 the word of God this evening, that, you see, let me quickly, let me quickly say something. Do you know when God created man and everything? God, God created all those and he called, he brought them to man. He said man should name them. Man should name them. And do you also observe that after God created the woman, he brought the woman to the man, and the man was the one who called her woman. You see? It's very important. Look, your mouth can package something. You know that in the market, in the market, it is your mouth that packages what you sell. So the package is already there, but when you begin to market it with your mouth, you are adding more layers of packaging to that thing. That is what we call evangelism. That when you go out to evangelize, you are actually packaging Jesus. Many people know Jesus already, but how will you, how are you packaging that Jesus to them? How are you selling that Jesus to them? Somebody say it's free. Yes, it's free, but you are marketing that product to them because there are so many other products that have confused people in the market. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is very important. Very important. Take note of what I'm talking about. As it is valuable in the world of business, so it is valuable to our Christian life. So it is valuable to our church. So it is valuable to your Christian, to your, to your ideas. It's valuable. You know what? We all have ideas. Yeah, we all have ideas, but when your ideas is packaged and well marketed, ah, uh, things will happen. It will sell. People sell because of packaging and marketing. When your product is good and there is no good packaging, it will not sell. When your product is bad and it has good promotion and good packaging, whoa, it will sell. So are we therefore going to have 
poor product? No. But when your product is good, has good promotion, good publicity, and good packaging, good marketing, wow, you will sell. You become the best. You become the go-to of everybody. Oh, yes. Every woman make hair. I mean, most women that make hair know that, oh, every hairdresser makes hair. But why is it that some people have a lot of customers and some don't have? It's because of what I'm talking about. It's because of what I'm talking about. It's very, very important. So whatever you do in this 21st century, in the 19... <laughs> okay, okay, let's leave that. In the... You know, <laughs> in the days of our forefathers, some things don't matter. Then, today, they matter. You too, you know. They matter today. There are some clothes that they used to wear. When I was looking through my parents' picture, my dad and my mom were looking through their pictures those days, I saw the trousers they were wearing down. The, 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 the down part of the trouser is just is wide. The top part is slim. My man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. There are some things that were so fashionable then, today. Don't try it, oh. <laughs> Don't try it, oh. Somebody told me, but this thing is like a circle. It goes, it comes back. That same fashion goes, it comes back again. Yes, we're the one that is in the now. <laughs> Don't wear the one that has gone. When he comes back and join them where he, to wear it. But when he goes, let it go. Don't go and be wearing the one that is gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So in, the 20, in this 21st century, yeah, many things go by packaging. If you wear, if, in fact, it is a generation of packaging. It's very, very important. Packaging. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, I want to make you laugh a little. Packaging sometimes can be very deceptive. Oh. There are many people that have bought phone those days in my country. The, the packaging of the phone, very good. The phone, when they bring it out, very good. By the time you open it, it is the it is Nokia 3310 or what do they call it? It's old time. Old, so they, they, they deceived you. They deceived you. So packaging can be deceptive. However, when your product is good, when your publicity is good, when your promotion is good, your packaging is good, mm, you're going to do well. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So if you are good and also well packaged, you will succeed and you will stand the test of time. Even after all the fakes have expired, your own will be uncovered. Your own will continue to be there. Your own will continue to thrive. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 1 to 14. I saw a scripture here. Ezekiel chapter 16, uh, verse 1 to 14. Ezekiel 16, 1 to 14. Very long reading, but I want to show you how God met us and what God did to us after he met us, he did something, and now see how he presented us. See the packaging he gave to us. I'll read that scripture. I'll, I'll read that scripture. Let, let's go for it. E e Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. We'll take that reading from verse 1. Ezekiel 16 from verse 1 to 14. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know their abominations. And they and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem. Excuse me. Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite. And thy mother was an Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the days thou was born, thy navel was not caught. Take note. Neither was thou washed in water to supper thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Look at condition he met that child. 
is describing the condition he met these people. None, he said, none eyes pity thee to do any of this unto thee. To have compassion upon you, nobody care about. They didn't look at yourself. Nobody showed you compassion. Now, but that was cast out in the open field because no value to the looting of thy person in the day that thou was born. Look at verse six. And when I pass by thee, this is God now. And when I pass by thee and I saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when Thou was in thy blood, leave. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, leave. He repeated it again. Look at verse 7. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and was in great, and thou art come to excellent ornament. You have become special now. Thy breast are fashioned and thy hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Look at verse 8. Now, when I pass by thee and I look upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. Oh, people are now looking at her. She has grown. Everybody is now, you see, and I spread my skirt over thee and cover thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Verse 9, then wash I thee with water, I wash you with water. Yea, I thoroughly wash away your blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Look at verse 10. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badgers, badger skin, and I guided thee with fine linen. I put on fine clothes on you. I put on jewelries on you, and I covered thee with silk. I deck you. See the word in you, deck. I deck you. You know somebody who say, man, that guy deck. I decked you also with ornaments, and I put bracelet upon thy hands and chain on your neck. Look at decoration. Look at packaging. Look at how God is decorating somebody he met in blood, somebody that was thrown away and outcast, somebody that was left. But God saw, saw us. He's describing us. So if God so much value us and place us and decorate us like this, why should we just just be, why shouldn't we place value on ourselves? Package ourselves where a young sister should not look like old, old, old woman. No, a, a, an elderly woman must still keep dressing beautiful and looking good. A young guy, a young man, always looking presentable and smart. This is who we are. We must be excellent, driven, and excellent all the time. Look at um, verse. 12, look at verse 12, verse 11, I deck thee also with ornaments and I put bracelet upon thy hand and a chain on thy neck and I put a jewel on thy forehead, oh my God, and earrings on thy ears and a beautiful crown upon your head, look at verse 13, thus, was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Oh my God, thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Look at the last verse. And thy renown, that's your, your news, went forth among the hiddens. Anywhere you pass, they, they look back, they wow. <laughs> look at this. He said, among the hidden, for thy beauty. So it was your beauty that announced you. Your packaging announced itself. For it was perfect through my comeliness, yeah, yeah, my excellence, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Wow. Isn't this wonderful? That God saw you like this and, and he didn't leave you where or how he met you. This is where I'm going. God did not leave you in your sin. He brought us, he cleaned us up, he dealt us, he beautified us. Why are your best clothes inside your wardrobe? What are they doing there? 
Mm. What are they doing there? The best of your clothes are not worn in a year. Go bring them out. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar person. You are a holy nation. You have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth the glory of God. Go bring them out. Don't eat with the old plate. Bring out a new plate and eat with it. Don't keep it for marriage. Eat it now. Live like a king. Live like a queen. Do it now. Prosper now. Do well now. Live it now. Enjoy it now. Move on now. Rise now. Increase now. Pre 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 be presentable now. Excellence now. It is now. Yes. It is now. Carry yourself. It's not pride. It is self-esteem. Hi, hi, one. Because you are the daughter of a king. You know you are a princess. You know you are a prince. He said we are a kingdom of prince and kings, princesses unto God. This is how he wants us to live. This is what God wants us to be. This is who God wants us to be. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Packaging. Packaging. Even God will never leave you the way he met you. He will never leave you the way you are. Okay, now I will ask you, the time you met with God, you asked God to come into Jesus to enter your life, you gave your life to God. Are you still the same level? No, you have grown, you have moved, you have increased. That is what God is talking about. That is what I'm talking about tonight. Okay, Jim. Yes arranging is <laughs> important. Ooh. Yes, so oh, it is important. That perfume, put it there. That roll-on, use it there. Oh my goodness. Yes, that fine shoe, put it on. Look, eh? your father owns the land. <laughs> you are the Omonile. You know, you know what we call Omonile? Omonile is the land owner. You are the owner of the land. The Bible says the act is the loss and the fullness thereof. Ooh, Jesus. He packaged us specially. See the way God, you need to go home, read Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 1. Read it again and see what God did to us. The Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 14, Psalms 1. 39 verse 14. He said, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, we are specially and excellently crafted. That's the way another translation put it. Specially and excellently put together. That's who you are. Oh, that's who you are. So package yourself. Package your product, package your, your services, package what you do. Anytime you enter your place of work, do it differently from others. Do it with a better attitude, a better persona, a better presentation. Do it. Let it be that if you are not there, even customers and people, everybody will know that you didn't show up today. You didn't come to work today. They will miss you. I'm telling you, do it like that. You are fearfully, you are specially and excellently put together. That's you. Uh, don't listen to the voice of the devil. That's you. That's you. That is the mirror. Our devotion at the, yesterday, yesterday and the day before yesterday said the mirror. That is the mirror. That's what you, you should see. When you look at the mirror, you should see you packaged by God, excellently made created and well-crafted by the almighty God. That's why God himself said, you were created in my image. And when I looked at that image I created, it was my likeness. I liked it. I liked what I saw. Hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about, we must never take packaging for granted, but we must never take profit for granted. Profit. You're wondering, profit? Yes, I will explain it to you. Never take profit for granted, brothers and sisters. Never, 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 ever take profit for granted. Over 80% of businesses, people's services, 
things that people started or you know they started doing go bankrupt within the first five years and that's why most people will tell you that if you survive the first five years in your business or your company or your organization that you will do well even in your marriage the way if you survive the first five years you 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 do well and all that now but the truth is this most business don't survive most people don't survive that first uh seasons of what they do or of their job life or their life they get shocked up because they took profit for granted because there was no profit and because there was no profit they gave up yes i'm telling you the truth why do people establish businesses is for the purpose of creating value in the form of product and services. Yes. It is the creation of value that should turn, in turn, make profit. Not just, I just want to do it. No, in turn, it should make profit. And it's all in the Bible. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 15. Before I even read that one, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. He said, in all labor, there is profit. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labor, there is profit. Let me quickly pray. I'm receiving a signal to pray for somebody. In the name that is above every other name, whatever you have labored for, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your family, whether it's you have been sending money home and it's as if thing is not the way you expect it. I mean, you are sending money home for to treat your father, to treat your mother, to take care of something, to finish a project. I pray for you today. You will gain the profit from that venture in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. As you hear the sound of my voice, you will gain profit from that venture it will be profitable for you. The Bible says in, in all labor, there is profit. May you get the profit. Ah, may you get the profit inside that tent. In the name of Jesus, coming to Canada, may you get the profit. You know how many rivers we cross, how many sea? <laughs> you, will be, you will get the profit of this land. You will get the profit of, of the UK. You will get the profit of your country. You will get the profit of your country. You will get the profit of your ministry. You will get the profit of knowing Apostle Paul. Many of you, you will get the profit of coming close to a man of God. You will get the profit in the name of Jesus. You will get it. You will get it. You will get it. Hey, you will get it. You will get it in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. In all labor there is profit. But they say idle shatters leads only to poverty. It leads only to poverty. So the creation of businesses, goods and services are supposed to lead to what? Profit, to make profit. A lack of profit spares doom you will get profit in the name of Jesus. So now in, in diverse aspect of life, like I've said, cost and benefit analysis, they are vital for progress. You look at your cost, you look at your benefits, they are very important for your, pro, for your progress. And whether it is, in your relationship, is about your project, or maybe your investment, you know, a business venture. Are you listening to me? A business venture, or maybe you entered into a transaction. When input is greater than output, it is not good news. Hello? <laughs> when they are all together. You must move. Yes, you labor, but you must also get profit. This is important. You must get profit. 
it must be commensurate profit. And I pray for you as I pray for myself. Between July and December, the heavens, the creator, the elements of nature, the elements of life, the almighty God will give unto you the commensurate benefits, the commensurate profits for your life, for your new dawn, in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. It's important. So it's an error. It is an error to take a source of profit and blessing for granted. If something is going to be, bring profit and it's going to bring blessing to you, it's, it's, you shouldn't take it for granted. Oh, no, 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 no. You should not take it for granted. You would never want to be in a position where a once profitable venture automatically become a bottomless pit. It just begin to swallow. It become an expenses something. It's only swallowing. It's only devouring resources and not producing. When deposits are greater than withdrawers and input is greater than output, it means that there is no profit. It means that there is no profit. I repeat, when your deposits are greater than your withdrawers and your input is greater than your output, it means that there is no profit. You will, be, you will gain profit. You will gain profit. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself completely, wholly to them. Then thy profiting, your profit, your result will become evident to all. It will appear to all. Profit. So God is interested in our profiting. Yes, he wants us to profit. He wants us to profit. He's very, very interested in us profiting. I'll read the scripture to you. Uh, because of time, I may not be able to read everything, but I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, some of us will know the story already. It's in, um, let's pull it out. Let's pull out the story in the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The story of the, of the master and the servants. The master uh, decided to travel, you know, and uh, what, before he traveled, he had some servants, stewards, and he gave each of them talents. To one of them, he gave 10. To another one, he gave five. And to another one, he gave two. And to another one, he gave one. He had given all of them this talent according to their several abilities. The Bible says, he said to them, go and trade with them. I give you this money and I'm telling you what to do with it. Go and trade with them until I come. And when I come, we will talk about sharing formulas and reward systems. The Bible said the one that he gave 10 went and he traded and he got 10 more. And the one he gave five traded and he got five more. This is a profit parable. And the one he gave two traded and he got two more. But the one he gave one talent went, dug the ground and placed the talent in the ground and covered it. A lot of, a lot of lessons. You see, if we decide to teach only this story for a whole six months, it will go far. Yes, we will still not finish it because it's very loaded with many things to learn from it. But I want to bring a lesson from it. If you read 
when the master returned, they all, he called them, he said, come give account. So accounting is important. Come give account. And they all came. And the one he gave 10 said, oh, master, you gave me 10. I have made 10 more. And he said, wow, come into the rest of your master. And then I will give you 10 cities. I give you 10 cities, not 20. You made 10 more. So the 10 you make, I, um, I keep that in the savings. And the other 10, you are in charge of 10 cities. And you, uh, you, I gave you five. Oh, he said, master, thank goodness. I traded with it and I made five more. Oh, wonderful, you don't wear. The one he gave to the old master, oh, I, I made two more. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Come, 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 come. And he rewarded them. And the one that he gave one talent, went and he dug it in the ground. He said, master, I know that you are a very difficult person. I know you are a hard man. Very, very hard. And you like to reap where you did not sow. Man, he took the master on. He fought his master. He was his master. But he fought him. He challenged him. He stood against him in many ways. And he said to him and said, Master, I, dug your, I, I don't want your trouble. And so I just dug the ground and I kept your master. Well, I, this, is your, this is your talent. If one you give me, please take your, your talent back. Whoa. And the master looked at him and said, thou wicked and slothful servant. And thou knowest that I reap where I, I, I sowed not and that I gathered where I did not strawed. You ought, I like the very word the master used. I like that word. You ought, therefore, to have put my money to the earth changers. And then at my coming, I should have received a little interest on top of it. I, I should have gotten a profit on top of it. Now he said, take that talent from him. Give it to the one that have 10 because he's productive, because he, he was able to, to, to make profit. You see, profit is very, very important. He said, now give it to him. He said, this one that called me names and said, I am nothing and that I reap where I did not sow. Ask me to be doing evangelism everywhere. What do you mean by that? Ask me to bring my tithe and bring this. No, 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 I can't labor for anybody. He said, take him, throw him into outer darkness. Yeah, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. That sent shivers down my spine. I began to look at this thing. This is, this is a serious matter. God takes profit seriously. We are God's investment in his kingdom. We are God's investment in this world. For every gift you have, God gave you to make more profit. For every talent God gave you, is to make profit. When you refuse to use it in the church, when you refuse to use it in the kingdom of God, when you refuse to use it in your office and be a blessing to people, a day will come when you will give account to the same master who gave you those talents, who gave us those talents, and ask us, how is your account? Give me account for how you lived your life, how you used the talent. I gave you voice to sing. How do you use it? I gave you wisdom. How do you use this? I gave you opportunity to preach and to teach. What did you do? I gave you opportunity to preach to my people. What did you do? I gave you a message to teach to the world. What did you do? I asked you to go out and preach the gospel to every creation. Did you do that? So God will begin to probe and look into the books of accounts and said, how did this my son fare? I pray that on that day, we will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stop in the third one. I will stop in the third one. The third one I'm going to talk about is posterity. We must never take posterity for granted. Never take posterity for granted. Remember, we've talked about packaging, and then we talked about profit. And now we are saying, don't take posterity for granted. Only few people on earth today have come to the place of understanding that living for, for posterity, P-O-S-T-E-R-I-T-Y, living for posterity 
is living beyond prosperity. Living beyond the moment. Living for tomorrow. Posterity. Never take it for granted. Uh, no, 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 no. Hey, Jesus, help me here. Many people have not got the big picture. They've not. <laughs> they don't even live with eternity or posterity in mind. I will show you a scripture very soon. And that will show you, I will let you know that what you do does not really end with you. If he ends with you, then you have not lived. Mm. He must outlive you. Many a times, God put in every human being what, we, what should outlive them. When God created the heavens and the earth in the book of Genesis, the Bible said God planted, he, he deposited in every fruit, the seed that we produce the tree, that we produce the seed, that we produce the fruit, that we produce the tree, that we produce the fruit, that we produce the seed, that we produce. Uh, you want me to continue? Everything he put inside, tailored it inside. Yeah. Yeah. You are a product of posterity. You are a product of what should not end. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. One question everyone needs to answer before you exit this world, before we exit this side of the divide and go and meet our Savior and our Master. The question is this, what will you be remembered for? This is the question of posterity. Yeah, posterity. Whatever you amass, if there is no posterity, it will be destroyed and squandered by the others. There are so many people where one time the richest, there was a time somebody, somebody excuse me, you know, many people today, they say, oh, Dangote is the richest man in Africa. Uh, he was not the first person. No. There were many people that have been the richest in Africa. Today, they are nowhere to be found. You don't even hear their names. Posterity. Posterity. There are some people that have ruled some nations, some countries in the world. Their fathers stole and stole and stole and stole money. Today, you can't even remember the names of their children. Hmm. Gone. Some people won lottery. Yeah, huge millions of dollars. Today, they are broke. They are broke like brokenness. Broken. No money, nothing. They are begging. Live not just for today, but for tomorrow. There is a tomorrow, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you. There are three main levels of life, of living life, which... I want to mention to you, number one, survival level. Number two, success level. Number three, significance level. Now, the question is this, are you living for survival? Or you are living for success? Ah, I want to be a success. Yes, I want to be a success. It's not a bad thing to be successful. Don't just end as a successful person and as a significant person, and as someone of significance, and as somebody, when you are exiting this world, you are leaving track records behind. Brother, it is possible. Old age does not stop this. You can start now. There's nothing like, eh, me, I'm already 70 years old. When do I start? You can start now. Listen, if you invest in one person, that one person can take your track record forever. I was listening to the immediate past vice president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Ochibanjo. I was listening to him and then he began to talk about somebody who helped him 
a professor who helped him, you know, to get through school, to, to, to graduate, gave him, you know, what his parents couldn't do for him. This man stood for him. This man supported him, gave him the enabling environment. The things that other students were worrying after, he didn't worry after those things. He was able to face his studies and he came out. Today is a professor and he became the president, I mean, the vice president of Nigeria. He said he will never, he was talking, he was talking about that man. So those who never knew that man know him today. The person doesn't have to be your biological child. Oh, Jesus, my time is gone. It doesn't have to be a biological child. You can sponsor children you never give back to. You can sponsor your younger ones who will rise tomorrow and put the name of your family in the map of the world. You may not be there anymore at that time. And I pray you will be there to look and say, wow. When I was doing night duty and day shift, walking through the snow to send you to university, I never knew you will become a senator of the Federal Republic. I never knew that one day you will travel to America and become somebody of substance and significance. Let us live beyond survivor. Brothers and sisters, let us live beyond just being successful. At least I'm not begging. At least nobody's feeding me. At least I'm okay. No, let's live beyond that. Let's duplicate our life into others. I will have me and my family and I alone. No, that is not the, the peak. That is not the program of God for our life. We were created to reproduce. And reproduction is the hallmark of posterity. I'll say one or two things and then I'll round up this session. Living for survival alone is living a mediocre life at the bottom of the ladder. Living for success alone is living an average life that is not, that, that, that is not the ultimate. Living for significance on the other hand, is the ultimate level of living. It should be the reason for our existence. Every day, my, my dear sister, my beloved, listen, my brother, listen, every day you are scripting your history. Be mindful of the fact that time will reveal the value of your existence in this world. Time will reveal the value of your existence, of my existence in this world. Be deliberate, be intentional about establishing a positive legacy for your posterity. This is important. Now, I, I was reading the scripture in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter nine. I'll round up with this. Acts of Apostles chapter nine, there was a very wonderful character in the early church. It was a woman by the name Dorcas, although that is in, by interpretation. Her real name was actually Tabitha. If you read Acts chapter 9, from verse 32 to 43, the story of Dorcas was well, in fact, laid out. She was a fashion designer. She couldn't make clothes for the king. She couldn't make clothes for the queen. She couldn't make clothes for the governor and the president. But she could make clothes for the poor people. She could make clothes. For the, young, for the ordinary people. She could make clothes for the church members. She could try and hem some clothes. She should at least tack, be able to tack some things. Yes, she was a fashion designer. The Bible says something happened. She fell sick and she died. The church, the brethren, they said no. If anybody will die now, no, no. My daughter have not wedded. No, Dorcas, we will not let you go. You will not die now. 
Let her go and rest in peace. She has finished her job. She has finished her work. Oh God, receive the heart of Docker. They say, no, that's a wrong prayer. Docker is not going anywhere. Heaven, you bring her back. You bring her back. <laughs> like joke, like joke. It, it was a, like play. They sent a message. They heard the news that Peter was at Joppa. So they sent Peter to Joppa to come. That something emergency is happening here. So Peter heard the news and he came down to Joppa. He came down to, um, to where Dorcas was. When he got to the church, people were crying. If they were crying, that would be okay. But they were not only crying, they were showing Peter the things that Dorcas did. The clothes Dorcas sold for them. The handkerchief he bought for them. The, the, the duvet she sold for them. The short, short knicker and the pants that he, she made for them. They were showing Peter things and Peter's spirit. You know, when you are showing a man of faith, showing your pastor some things, his spirit, they were crying and they were showing Peter, oh no, his spirit got grieved. And then he said, where, where, where did you put him? Where did you put her? Peter went upstairs. They said she, she's in the upper room. He, he went upstairs, went straight to Tabitha and said, Tabitha, I say unto you, come back. The Bible said immediately, she got up. <laughs> she got up. Miracles happen because they, they presented to Peter. Say, come. She has done something. This is not the this person is a product, this is a material. This is a utility person. This is quality. We can't allow this one to just go. Ah, we can't replace the cast if the cast leave this church. We cannot replace the cast. The cast is irreplaceable. She must come back. And the Bible said, Dorcas came back. What will you be remembered for? Never take posterity for granted. Never ever take posterity for granted. I will stop here today. I want you to close your eyes. We talked about three things that we must never take for granted today. Packaging. Profits and posterity, 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 posterity. What will I be remembered for? What will you be remembered for? Who have you helped? I know we always pray, God help me, God help me, God help me. And God will use people to help us. I think it will be good sometimes to say, Lord, open my eyes, show me who to give to. Show me who to help. Which thing should, what should I give to your kingdom? How should I support this church? How should I even help this ministry? What can I do? I don't have much, oh God. You see me, but I can do a little thing for you. What will you be remembered for? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me never to take packaging for granted. Help me never to take Profit for granted. You want me to pro profit. You want me to have a good high self-esteem and package well because I'm your image and your likeness. But Lord, much more you want me to think posterity. You want me to think the future. You want me to think about how to duplicate myself the blessings you have given to me, the mercies and the favor you have shown me, how to duplicate it into others. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. My Father and my God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Many a times we ask us, we ask, God, do this for me. Oh, I want you to help me. I want you to give me this. I want you to give me that. Lord, help us to see areas where we too, we can help. We too, we can support others. We too, we can be a, a, an advantage to other people's life. We can be a plus to other people's life. Lord, help us to be, to think eternity 
to think posterity. After we are done here and we have gone, what are we going to be remembered for? Who we say, Pastor Paul touched my life. Who would become an instrument for God because our path crossed? Lord, I pray for everyone here right now. Give all the grace and the spirit to think in this manner, to think like this, to view things like this, to see things like this in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. Let, let this word continue in our heart. Yes, let it continue in our heart. Yes, we may have been discouraged in time past. The enemy may have come to say, well, you don't even have enough. Why must you do this? Lord, I pray. Help us so that the little we have, we can add, add it to you. We can factor God into our life. We can make you first in us. Your word declared that we should seek first the kingdom. All other things will be added. Help us. So that what is added will be even more than what we have given in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I give you praise and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.